Good morning. Today our topic of discussion is types of arrays. So before going into the discussion, just we recollect whatever we have discussed in the earlier lectures. In the last lecture, we have seen the definition of array and significance of arrays. So to know the need of an array, we just go through this relationship. If we want to increase the gain of the antenna, the aperture area of the antenna should be increased as these two are directly proportional. But if we consider an individual element, there is a limit on the dimensions of the individual element beyond which we cannot increase further. So instead of using an individual element, by stacking up similar elements together, we can construct a larger antenna. So by default, the dimensions of the antenna increase. That means the aperture area of the antenna is increased so that the gain of the antenna can be increased. So that is the significance of arrays. So coming to the types of arrays, we can classify the types of arrays based on spacing, excitation and also space parameters. So this spacing and excitation we can consider as physical properties of the array antenna. So this physical properties may include the distance between the elements and the signal fed to the element everything. So depending on the spacing and excitation we can define the array as uniform array. So uniform array means the name itself indicates that is uniform in different parameters. So that means the elements used in the array should be identical. That means if we use one element as dipole, the other element should also be dipoles only. Similarly, the uniformity in the sense of current, the signal which we feed to the element each each and every element in the array and the signal phase whatever we are providing to the each and every element of the array and the other parameter which makes the array uniform is spacing between the elements so there should be uniform spacing between the element that means in the first two elements if the spacing is for for example lambda by 2 the second and third elements or the third and fourth element should also be spaced with a distance lambda by 4 only so this is uniform array. Coming to the second classification, we can classify arrays depending on the space parameters. So earlier uh, distance between the elements and excitation, those are those we considered as a physical parameters and space parameters is nothing but the radiation. That means in space, whatever parameters we measure for an antenna performance, those are space parameters. Depending on space parameters, we can define broadside array and end fire array. Broadside array is the radiation maximum is at right angles to the main axis of the antenna. That means what is the axis we will see later in the later slides and if that is the case we can call that as, that array as broadside array and if the maximum radiation is along the axis of the antenna. So that type of array is end fire array. So Going to the broadside array, this is a bright directional array. As earlier we discussed, the maximum radiation is normal to the array axis, though it is in the normal direction. If the array is radiating in both the directions, that is normal to the axis, that is a broadside array. And the remaining uh, parameters, that means uh, uh, what we can say, uh, remaining points are what we have explained for, discussed for uniform array, equally spaced and they should be equally fed in terms of current and phase. So these are the criteria for a broadside array. Coming to the structure of a broadside array, if you see in this you can see the axis and elements. This horizontal line we are considering as the axis and these vertical lines we consider as the elements. So if you see the radiation pattern, for example if we consider axis along 0 degrees and 180 degrees, so we can say the maximum radiation pattern is along 90 degrees and 270 degrees axis of the array. Okay. So this is the other orientation of broadside array where we have considered the axis of, of the array vertically which is the angles we considered along this vertical line as 0 and 180 degrees. So the radiation pattern is along the direction of the elements. So you can see the elements here. Okay. And the other type is end fire array. So all criteria are similar to that of the broadside array except dipoles are fed 180 degrees out of phase. So there we have considered that all dipoles are fed with the same phase in broadside pattern, broadside array. But here the phase 
that is provided to each signal should be 180 degrees out, out of phase. And the radiation maximum is along the ends. That's why it is called an end fire array. Along the axis, ends of the axis, the maximum radiation occurs. Okay. Now we'll see the configuration of end fire array. Again, similar to the broadside pattern, here we can consider if the axis is along 0 and 180 degrees, as we know this is the radiation pattern, maximum radiation is along the ends of the axis. So here you can see maximum lobes are along 0 degrees and 180 degrees. Okay, And this is other configuration of end fire array. And uh, going to the general conditions for any array, that means uh, whether it is a broadside array, end fire array, there are some common general conditions. So if you see the configuration of this array, this is the axis and these are the elements uniformly spaced. Elements are uniformly spaced. You can see the spacing is D and this is the observation point where we want to observe the radiation pattern in the far field. So these are the line joining the observation point with that of the element and this line is making an angle theta with that of the axis of the array. Similarly here also they have shown for two elements and the signal from each element is going through different paths. So at the far field as we are taking the observation point, these two are considered as parallel lines. So there exists some difference in the distance between, length of the distance between these two lines. Okay. So from this geometry, we can consider that distance as d cos theta. Okay. So the necessary conditions is the distance between the elements should be less than one wavelength. Otherwise, if you want to satisfy this criteria, that is if you take it as equal to or greater than lambda, there may exist some grating lobes. So what are grating lobes? You can see this picture. If we have designed an array to radiate in this direction, the direction which I am showing, but after designing the array, if we are getting a radiation in the other direction also, where the signal strength is equal to that of the maximum lobe in the intended direction. Actually, this is a disturbance, which is in the unwanted direction. If we are getting the maximum lobe, that is a disturbance. So, to avoid these disturbance, these lobes are called grating lobes. And to avoid these grating lobes, this condition should be satisfied. And when we consider the strength of any signal, it is a combination of amplitude and phase of the signal. So, if we consider the phase of the signal, there exist two parts in this phase that is kd cos theta plus beta. So this first part is because of the path difference of the signal traveled from each element to the observation point. So this is a distance difference between two parallel lines. So the, when the signal is traveling from here to there and here to here, this is the path difference we can consider. And beta is the phase because of excitation. How the element each element is fed with what is the phase of each element the difference between these two phases is nothing but beta so generally this beta is called as progressive ratio okay so to get the maximum value of the signal this phase of the signal should be zero so psi equal to zero and if you substitute the same we can consider kd cos theta plus beta equal to zero so from this we can derive the general condition of progressive phase shift beta as minus kd cos theta. So if we apply the same conditions to broadside array antenna where the radiation pattern is along 90 and 270 degrees, the uh, condition if we substitute theta equal to 90 or 270, we can obtain the general condition on the progressive phase shift for broadside array as beta equal to 0. So this is a radiation pattern. And Applying the same conditions to end fire array, we, we know end fire array radiation pattern is along 0 degrees or 180 degrees. But here in the earlier case, broadside array case, we can say whatever value you substitute for theta, beta value is 0 only. But in the end fire case, if you substitute theta equal to 0, that gives beta value as minus kd, that is the radiation pattern to get along 0 degrees maximum radiation pattern, beta value should be minus kd and if we want maximum radiation lobe along 180 degrees, the progressive phase shift value should be equal to kd. Okay, And this is the radiation pattern. So here as there are two different values of progressive phase shift, this is for 0 degrees where we considered beta as minus kd 
and this is along 180 degrees where we consider beta as plus kd. So, the in the earlier case, this end fire array is considered as ordinary end fire array. Why this is considered as ordinary end fire array? Because though it is giving maximum radiation pattern in a particular direction, it won't ensure that the directivity of the maximum lobe is maximum. Okay, so by modifying the progressive phase shift value slightly, we can get enhancement in the directivity by 70%. So you can see the equations of progressive phase shift here for 0 degrees negative of kd plus approximately pi upon n for 180 degrees positive value of the same can be considered. As these criteria as are suggested by Hansen and Woodyard, this type of array is called hansen Woodyard end fire array. So which gives a directivity enhancement by 70% and there is a specific condition on the element spacing. So earlier for grating lobes we have considered the element spacing should be less than lambda but here the particular value of the distance that has to be considered is lambda upon 4. So this, these are the types of arrays. So we can see the comparison between end fire array and broadside array. So if you see end fire array the radiation pattern is along 0 degrees and 180 degrees, broadside array 90 degrees and 270 degrees. I have shown some minor lobes also here. and uh, when we see uh, not only along these four directions, in some other directions also we may get maximum radiation pattern which gives the concept of phase scanning array which we will discuss in the next class. So meanwhile you just go through this assignment which I have given for, your, for you as an exercise and try to solve these questions uh, and if you have any doubts in the next class we can uh, get it cleared. Okay. So thank you.